Hi, my name is Jess, but you may know me as Sodium Girl. In 2004, I faced kidney failure, but from the beginning, I decided that I would do what I could with my own two hands in my kitchen to take care of myself and my kidneys. That meant going on a low sodium diet, which according to the National Kidney Foundation can reduce high blood pressure, which is a leading cause of kidney disease. Just because I had to get rid of the salt didn't mean I had to get rid of the foods I love. And after nine years of experimenting in my kitchen, I have some great low sodium recipes that I want to share with you. And because it's summer, what better way to celebrate delicious low sodium food than to barbecue? All of these recipes can be found along with their nutritional analysis at the Kidney Kitchen on www.kidney.org. And make sure to talk to your doctor and your nutritionist to see if these recipes work for you and your body's needs. To start, we are going to make some bunless quinoa burgers with a tomato-free curry sauce. Now, this recipe is a great example of how you can take any of your favorite dishes and make them kidney-friendly. To start for our burgers, we are actually going to replace half of the meat with one cup of cooked quinoa. You're going to boil two cups of water with the one cup of quinoa, follow directions, and when it's finished, the quinoa should be fluffy with little white tendrils poking out from the grain. Pour it into a large mixing bowl to cool, and when it's cool to the touch, you are going to mix your quinoa with one pound of ground lamb. We're going to mix our raw ground lamb with one whisked egg, four cloves of chopped garlic. You can always easily chop up your garlic or use a garlic press. One tablespoon of grated ginger. And then again, just be careful of your fingers. Half teaspoon black pepper, half teaspoon paprika, two tablespoons chopped mint, one tablespoon chopped cilantro, and one tablespoon of chopped chives. Using your hands or a wooden spoon, mix all the ingredients together until well combined. And make eight burger patties and set aside on a plate. As all those flavors really come out and infuse, we're going to make our special kidney-friendly tomato-free curry ketchup. For the ketchup, you're going to roughly chop up some red bell peppers and add that to a blender with a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, and you're going to puree until you have a delicious red bell pepper apple cider vinegar veggie smoothie. You're going to pour the blended red bell peppers into a small saucepan, add a half a cup brown sugar, half teaspoon balsamic vinegar, one teaspoon black pepper, a quarter teaspoon no salt garlic powder, and a quarter teaspoon smoked paprika. Bring it to a boil and let it reduce down for at least 15 minutes or until it's as thick as you like it. Once that tomato free ketchup has cooled, it's time to add in the curry powder. Put two teaspoons of the yellow stuff in there, give it a good mix, and put it in the refrigerator until you're ready to serve, and you can keep it up to a week. We've got our burgers prepped and our grill is heating up, and now it's time to get our spice rubbed corn ready. To start, mix all of your spices together. One teaspoon curry powder, one teaspoon cumin, one teaspoon smoked paprika, and one teaspoon salt-free garlic powder in a bowl. And of course, if you want more spice for your corn, just mix up some more of this rub. Then, after cleaning your corn of the husk, roll it in a quarter teaspoon of oil. I like to use my hands, but of course, if your vegetables like to be dainty, go ahead and use a brush to brush on the oil. You want to cover the corn with a teaspoon of the spice rub. And to finish, you want to wrap each cob in foil and you can place it in the oven for 45 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or on the grill for about 15 minutes to cook, rotating every so often. Once they're cooked, you can eat this corn immediately or you can serve it cold and refrigerate it. They're even better the next day. The grill is hot and we are going to start cooking our burgers and our corn. Burgers are going to go on. They are going to cook about five to eight minutes per side. Just remember to rotate the corn and flip those burgers. Close up that grill and let's make some slaw. No picnic, no barbecue is complete without a slaw. But in order to make it kidney friendly, let's do something really special and let's make it out of fruit. You're going to cut up the apples, rhubarb, and pears into thin matchsticks. 
set your pear aside in one bowl and your apple and rhubarb in another. In the apple and rhubarb bowl, add half a red onion sliced to look like those matchsticks and then put in half a cup of orange juice or pineapple juice, lemon juice, or any other kind of citrus juice, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, a half teaspoon of honey, and give it a good mix. Put both bowls into the refrigerator for 30 minutes to cool. So to finish off our low sodium summer barbecue, first you're going to add your pears to the rest of the fruit slaw salad and give it a good mix with your hand. Next, to plate our burger, we're gonna take one of our sturdy cabbage leaves and put your grilled burger on top of it. A little dollop of creme fraiche or Greek yogurt and a good helping of that curry ketchup. I also like to saute up some red onions, so put those on top as well. Carefully take off your hot corn, remove it carefully onto your plate. Finish it all off with a nice helping of slaw. Fold it up and take a big bite. Mmm. Low sodium, delicious. For more nutritional information about the recipes you see here, definitely visit the Kidney Kitchen at www.kidney.org and for more tasty low sodium recipes, be sure to check out my blog, sodiumgirl.com and my cookbook, which is coming out next spring, 2013.